Welcome to Katia V5. This will be assembly design tips and tricks. As we can see, I'm already with the model loaded and I am within assembly design, as we can see in the top right corner. Now, I highly encourage that you follow along with this video. That means that you should also download the file. I will put the download in the video description. So this is a drone from GrabCAD. We see a Go GoPro Karma drone created by Hans. You can download only the step file or you can download all the archives. There will be also some renderings over here. Now, before we get started, I also want to present the fact that this drone was created in SOLIDWORKS. I also have it open over here. And as you can see, SOLIDWORKS has the Y axis going up and down and the Z axis is positioned over here. The same model loaded with Inkatia will be flipped. So as we can see, the Z axis will be positioned over here, just like the Y axis is um, usually in uh, standard CAD software. And we have the Y axis going up and down. What does this mean is that if I will try to manipulate the components using the manipulation window over here, I will see if I will drag my components along the Z axis. So if you are just getting started with Katia, it's usually common not to check the orientation of the compass over here. And uh, you would know that, okay, Z axis will go up and down. But in this case, for this step file, which was imported, I will see that the Z axis will follow along the orientation of the product within the assembly as indicated by the compass to the right. So that means that I will have to manipulate this along the Y axis. So this is one of the difference between um, those two cut solutions. As we can see over here within SOLIDWORKS, if I will go move component along assembly entities, now depends of how I drag the mouse. So if I will grab this and move it up and down, I will be able to move it on the Y axis. If I will grab it and move the mouse on the X axis, we'll move along that axis. And um, this is for the Z axis in solid. Okay, now let's get back to Katia. I just wanted to present you those facts. If you are just getting started with Katia, maybe you are just, that's why you also decided to watch this video. So we have the product tree to the right. As we can see, we have multiple components. Some of them are sub assemblies, just like the assembly motor. And if I'm going to click on this plus over here in the uh, feature tree, I'm going to see that the assembly motor has the motor part, the motor element. If you want to go and uh, open individual part, you can click on that plus again. And if you're going to double click, on the component with the yellow gear that will automatically switch us to a part assembly workbench so it's not mandatory that you will be over here within part design but if the last time you use katia you made use of part design it will automatically take you there if for some reason maybe you are working with generative shape design so surface design we're going to see that Katia will be able to just translate within that workbench without having to do any changes. So all the layout will be changed according to the workbench. Now, if I will double click again on GoPro Karma, I will see that again, Katia will switch to assembly design. And now if I will try for a new component to go back to a specific part, Katia remembers that last time the workbench generative shape design was open and it will automatically transfer the model to that. So there are multiple models at the same level, let's say. So there is generative shape design, also imagine and shape, part design, sheet metal design. They are all at the same level. That means that if for some reason I will go now to imagine and shape, again, nothing will happen. Just the workbench will show me the feature specific to this workflow. And it will be the same with part design. So maybe if you are just getting started, you will most likely learn the basics within part design, assembly design and drafting, because those are, let's say, the 
Katia Basics. So I'll just go back to part design for this. Now, if for some reason this feature tree is not big enough, so this is highly dependent on the screen resolution that you are working with. If you are working on a 4K monitor, you will have a lot more, let's say, room over here. If you are working on a laptop with uh, an integrated video card that um, will have a lower resolution, this feature tree will be smaller. The same will happen to the overall, let's say, user interface. As you can see, now I have my features arranged over here, so this is not the default position. If for some reason you don't have all the features over here, maybe in part design, and you want to restore them, you can go up to tools. We're going to go to customize. And then we have the possibility to restore the workbench. That means that I'm going to go over here to toolbars. And with the standard selection, I will hit restore position. Restore position of all toolbars. I'm going to click on OK. And now by default, all the, let's say, the features will be embedded on the right side of the screen. So depending on the screen resolution, some of them will not be present over here. That's why I usually prefer to have mine drag and drop from there. So using the left click, you can drag and drop those. And now they are positioned like this vertical if you want to swap them to be horizontal so you can maybe position them over here at the top you can easily do that by just left clicking on that element and position it at the top so that will have it transfer over there now i will arrange them over there i usually prefer to keep the graphic properties to the to this section so to the um, upper left side of the screen. You can access those by right clicking on the empty toolbar and those will be graphic properties and they will automatically appear over here. So you can mainly control the opacity, so how transparent is an element, also the color and also the line weight over here. Regarding on your screen resolution, I highly recommend that you move the features just like I move those at the top until you will have some free room over here. That means that all the toolbars that are by default present within this workbench will be positioned over here. And we can do the same for assembly design as well. To go from the part design up to the assembly design, we just have to double click the main product. So in this case, I will double click on GoPro Karma and I will see that Katia will seamlessly transfer towards the assembly design. If for some reason you work with other workbenches that are compatible with assembly design, such as, let's say, demo kinematics, keep in mind that the same process will happen, just like with part design, generative shape design, imagining shape, they are the three workbenches at the same level and there are multiple at that level. The same will be with assembly design and digital mockup. Now, since I'm within digital mockup, which is, let's say, a more advanced assembly design workbench, I will go back to part design. And now if I will double click on GoPro Karma, again, the software will maintain that and I will be positioned within the last product assembly workbench, in this case, digital mockup cinematics. So I will go back to assembly design for this case. As you can see, just like I did with part design, some of the elements are positioned at the top until I had all the features positioned on the screen. We can do the same um, workflow over here, so tools, options. Keep in mind that I highly recommend that you will reset yours, so not tools, options, tools, customize. And I will also restore the position of this toolbar. So while you are on standard, if you're gonna click restore position, the toolbars for the active workbench, in this case, assembly design, will all be docked in the right side of the interface. And from here, I will just move the important ones, so maybe 
the constraints, I will position them at the top. I see that there are still some embedded features that are missing. As we can see, there are two arrows over here. So I'll just move the features until all of those will be visible. And I know that because I have this space over here that no longer has any features. I will just re-enable the graphic properties and this is usually the workbench that I prefer, but I encourage you to find your own, let's say, workbench layout. Now, regarding the, the tree size, if for some reason you don't have this feature tree displayed, you can press F3 and that will hide and show the feature tree as we can see. Also, if you want to change the size and location, you will first need to activate the tree. That means that I will move my mouse cursor over the lines within. And we're going to see that the mouse cursor will change. So we, we have the arrow here over here, and this will be like a hand um, with a, a finger up. So that means that now I can click over here. That will make the 3D elements within the viewer inactive. As we can see, there will be um, with this uh, gray shader on top. And that means that now, if I will press the middle mouse button, I have the possibility to move the tree around. By default, Katia V5 has its position over here to the left, just like in SolidWorks. In the newer version of Katia, so uh, 3D experience, we're going to see that some of the elements are swapped, like the features will be positioned over here, but by default, the tree will still remain to the left side. So this is common for SOLIDWORKS, Fusion, and um, other CAD softwares. Now, while you have this selected, so as I said, if I will press the middle mouse button, I can move it around. But if I will zoom in and zoom out, I can make this smaller or bigger. So that means that if I want to zoom in in Katia, I will press the middle mouse button. Afterwards, I will tap the right button once. And now if I will move my mouse up and down, I will be able to scale the feature tree. While you are working with the feature tree, we see that the 3D model will be hidden. So as soon as I will stop pressing down the middle mouse button, that will also appear. So now we're going to have this layout over here. If you want to fit it all, so in this case, I have the motor part three and motor one expanded. That means that the height of the tree will have this length. If I want to fit this to my screen, I can just go over here to fit all in. And since we have the tree enabled, Katia will act the zoom for this element. So that means that I will just click on fit all in. And we're going to see how Katia stretch this. So GoPro Karma product with all the elements up to applications. If I wanted to maybe not have expanded those, and now I will click fit all in again, Katia will do that. So I highly recommend that you use the fit all in in order to position the tree as you desire. When you finish arranging the, the feature tree, if you want to go back to the standard modeling, you're just going to move your mouse over the tree again, and we're going to left click, and that will close that. And we're going to see that now we can again zoom in and zoom out on our component. Another thing regarding zooming in and zooming out, since Katia has it a little bit different with the scroll button uh, pressed and uh, the right button clicked once, you can also use control for this. So if I'm just going to hit the, um, the middle mouse button, that will take me to the pen, allowing me to pan the view. And now if you're just going to press the control button, you're going to see that you have the possibility to, to rotate around. So this will allow easy rotation. And the same button so we're just going to use control i know that alt appeared over over there but it's not required so again i'm holding down the middle mouse button 
I'm holding down control. That means that I will rotate as long as I hold down the control key. And as soon as I will release the control key, but keep the mouse middle button pressed, I will have the possibility to zoom in and zoom out. So I highly encourage you that you use this because for me, I'm familiar with the standard mouse orientation and rotation within Katia, but for newer users, it's a little bit tricky with, uh, with the control, with the mouse control. Then you can use the control key in order to control that with ease. Now, if you enjoy this content, I highly recommend that you're going to check uh, other Katia tips and tricks videos. And I added the playlist over here. I will position it within the video description. And over here, I presented many aspects and tips and tricks regarding Katia. My most popular video is regarding how to reset Katia to defaults. And we're going to see various elements over here. So how you can hide and show the 2D drawing. So feel free to, to check that playlist if you have other questions regarding Katia. And if you have questions that are not answered within uh, this playlist, please leave me a comment and I will create a video dedicated to that comment in order to, to help you. Okay, so now I will position another video over here to the left and a subscribe button to the right. If you find this content useful, please consider to subscribe. Thanks, see you in the next video.